What letter of the alphabet is that, Emily? That is an S. Please notice this is a lowercase cursive S. It's the symbol I use for what? Let's see here. Arc length. The equation for arc length is what? S equals? Dark study. Is it? Close. You have the two, the two right symbols, but rather than divide them, you should multiply them. S equals R times theta. The arc length is equal to R times theta. Notice, so chapter 10 is about circular motion and what happens. So this is arc length, which is just the linear distance traveled when moving in a circle. Notice that this is a special case of circumference equals 2 pi times R, where the theta is 2 pi and r is the radius, and the arc length is the circumference. So the circumference equals 2 pi r is a special case of s equals r theta. Please remind me what you, must you always use for theta in this equation. Uh, so radians must use radians. In order for the dimensions to work out, because if you recall, radians are dimensionless. What? Uh, one revolution, class equals how many degrees? 360 degrees equals how many radians? Two pi radians. You are going to have to be able to convert back and forth. For those of you who are new to me, please never use R for radians. What does R stand for? Radius. I do understand that for some of you in the text messaging generation that the A and the D make it just way too hard to write down. I do understand that. It's like, it's like pulling teeth. It's like, oh, no, I can't do it. No! Please, do not use R for radians. R-A-D. Three whole letters. The line over the top, which is not a vector line, remind me, we used this last time. What does this symbol represent, Jenkins? Average. So what is the equation for average? Oh, actually, <laughs> what is this symbol? Michael? Good, was angular velocity. What's the symbol we're using? The symbol stands for angular velocity. What is the name of this symbol, Sierra? This is an omega. What is the equation for average angular velocity, Gary? Uh, that's okay, that's why we review. Sierra? Change, theta over change, time. change in theta over change in time. Uh, that is average angular velocity. What then, Gary, is the equation for instantaneous angular velocity? The derivative of theta with respect to time. Good. What is the symbol I'm going to use for angular acceleration? Hillary. Alpha. Alpha. What's another name for alpha? Miller? Fishy. Fishy thing. <laughs> alpha, fishy thing, angular acceleration. I'll put a line over it to make it the average. What is the equation for average angular acceleration, Nick? Good. Also give me the instantaneous, Nick. The derivative of the angular velocity with respect to time. Good. Uh, we also have our U Fishy M equations. Omega final equals omega initial plus angular acceleration times delta t. Uh, change in theta equals omega initial times delta t plus one half angular acceleration times delta t squared and omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two ang angular acceleration times delta theta. Much to my own chagrin, these are actually on your equation sheet. Why, why don't we need these on your equation sheet? Because it's redundant. It's the same thing, she's using different symbols. So it works just like UAM. If you know three of the U Fishy M equations, you can figure out the other, or I'm sorry, three of the variables, you can figure out the other two. Let's see. What else do we have? All right, let's do this one. We'll start with S equals R theta. 
Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually take the derivative of the entire equation with respect to time. So the derivative of the entire equation with respect to time. So this will be the derivative of arc length with respect to time is equal to, what's the derivative of the radius with respect to time, assuming the radius is constant? Class? Well, actually, that, that wasn't fair, because we actually have to multiply by theta, so it's just going to stay there as the radius, because it's a cut. So d theta dt. So assuming a constant radius, we're going to have r times d theta dt. What is the derivative of the um, angular position as a function of time, Mr. P? Does what as a function of time? Um, That's what theta is, angular position. Um, yeah. um, that's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> Class, help them out. That was not quite as good. Yeah, so I was hoping there. John? It's a tenuous angular of velocity. No wonder. It is clearly over here. We look. It's this guy the instantaneous angular velocity. So this is r times omega. What then is the derivative of arc length as a function of time? Nick? Tangential velocity. Tangential velocity. Let's take the derivative of this one. The derivative with respect to time of the tangential velocity equal to r times omega. In other words, we have the derivative of the tangential velocity with respect to time equals r times the derivative of angular velocity as a function of time. What is the derivative of angular velocity as a function of time, Henry? Um, angular acceleration. What is the derivative of tangential velocity as a function of time, Bill? Um, Which is why you will always see me write s equals r theta above tangential velocity equals r times angular velocity, which is just above tangential acceleration equals r times alpha. Because the derivative of this equation is this equation. The derivative of this equation is this equation. Please find these equations on your equation sheet. Find them. What do you see? There's V equals R times omega. You have the tangential velocity equals the radius times the angular velocity. You only have one of the three. Oh, woe is us. Will it be okay in the long run? Because if you have one, you have the other two. Agree? Because if you have the tangential velocity equals R times omega, you can take the derivative or the integral and you will get the other one. Uh, we've done all those. We need the other one is a sub c it's for centripetal acceleration. Remind me, Bill, what does centripetal mean? Inward, Inward or center seeking. Good. We have two different equations for centripetal acceleration. Please give me one of the two. Look. Um, <coughs> tangential velocity squared over the radius. Good. Tangential velocity we know is r times omega. We can square that divided by the radius. We get r squared omega squared divided by the radius, or we get centripetal acceleration equals r times omega squared. There are, are two equations for centripetal acceleration. 